is Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. Are we tracking vehicles located in via GPS? No, that's that's not what we're here for. Instead, we're going to talk about backing up WB67s into parking loading docks, making sure they can fit around the corners. Can the fire trucks get into a neighborhood, that sort of thing. And that is all swept path analysis. And that's what most people are, are aware of vehicle tracking is doing. But that's not it. Well, that's part of it. We've got a lot more things we can do in here, not just swept path analysis. We've got another thing called parking layout. So this is not going to automate an entire parking lot for you, but it will help you lay out that parking striping very quickly and easily. It might be a simple giant, uh, you know, the new Brave Stadium going in down here, parking for that. Or it might be a little office complex, putting parking in there around those islands. And we've got a third aspect here, starting to see a lot more popularity around here of roundabouts. Roundabout designs, yeah, not a simple concept, but with vehicle tracking, it's basically click, point, and drag. Very quick and easy, simple to do. And then we can combine these two and actually do a swept path analysis on a roundabout. So we've got three things we're going to look at evaluating the vehicle movement. Swept path analysis. Can we fit the WB67 into the loading dock? Can we get the, the um, FedEx truck into our office complex? Or can I back my boat into the garage? Even something that simple. Uh, optimizing roads and road and campus geometrics, you know, once again, go back, we do a swept path analysis, find out, hey, it's not going to fit. Let's modify it a little bit. And we do have some real-time analysis capabilities here. When you're doing that swept path analysis, as you move the vehicle around, you can see where the, the vehicle is going to go, the wheel tracks, the envelope, everything you want to do. And we can even animate that if we need to. And we'll take a little brief demo of all this, of course. I'm not just going to do PowerPoint all day long. Um, sum it up, and then we'll open up to questions. So let's take it for a drive. Why not? So I'm going to jump over to vehicle tracking here real quick. Actually, I'm going to jump over to AutoCAD. Vehicle tracking runs in AutoCAD. It runs in Civil 3D. Any AutoCAD-based product it will work in. If you have Civil 3D, it integrates directly with that, and vehicle tracking understands Civil 3D surfaces and corridors, as well as alignments, as you would expect. So what next? Let's do some swept path analysis. So I've got a little office complex here. Maybe it's a you know, little uh, condo complex. Who knows what it is? But I'm going to start out and see if I can make a vehicle Start out down here, come up along the road, make it through that turn, and then we'll see if we can get it to go around this called uh, this roundabout. Can it be done? Let's find out. So first thing we're going to do, notice I have a new ribbon tab up here for vehicle tracking. And we're going to make use of that. So I'm going to click on the vehicle tracking tab over here. And it's going to load up a ribbon. This is integrated directly into AutoCAD, no third-party program to run. And the easiest thing to do is come over here and click on the Auto Drive Arc button. It's going to load up my vehicle library. It's going to give me a list of vehicles from around the world. Uh, you know, there's a couple of interesting categories in here. I've got aircraft and support vehicles, commercial aircraft, you know, Boeing 737s. Um, there's a 737-900. I was on one of those last night. But not just vehicle tracking uh, for aircraft. We have the support vehicles, such as the baggage trains and things like that. We've got category down here for each country, basically. There's a interesting one, uh, tram and rails. So downtown Atlanta, we have a streetcar. We can see how well that's going to do. And specialist vehicles. Things in here, uh, query vehicle, port vehicles, stretch limousines, wind turbines, all sorts of vehicles. But I'm just going to look down here at the bottom, go to my U.S. design vehicles. Look at the Ashto 2011 and see what we have in here. And I'm going to start off with something simple like a UPS truck, SU-30. 
So I pick my vehicle I want to track, click on proceed, and it's going to ask me where am I going to start this at. I'm just going to kind of pick a location down here. Just click on the mouse, and then I get to pick a direction I want to drive it. Kind of going down the road like that. And pops up a little thing here. I'm going to slide off to the side. And I can still uh, change directions if I want to or starting point. Maybe I don't want to start there. I want to start further back. All sorts of things. We're going to proceed and start driving this vehicle. Now we can still navigate in this mode using standard pan and zoom functionality. And notice as I move this mouse around, it's showing my vehicle position is showing, if I can get close enough, you can see the wheels right now are showing the steering angle involved. And these steering angles are all locked in on each vehicle uh, to what the vehicle specs actually are. They're probably rather conservative, which is a good thing. But I have to just now click on a few spots, and it's going to track that vehicle along here. And we'll come up to my intersection about to here. We'll start the turn. Turn it in right about there. And I haven't done anything complex or fancy yet except just picking a few points on the screen. Now we we'll come up to our cul-de-sac. Uh, not cul-de-sac, roundabout. We'll try to make that corner. Notice it's not quite wanting to go. It tells me that roundabout is too small. There we go. So I've made it through that intersection that I wanted to demonstrate. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Now, the great thing about this, I've already created the path. What can I do from here? Well, if I need to adjust it, I can. And grab any of these uh, little target points. Just grab the grip on it. I can move where my path is. Real-time analysis lets me know where that vehicle envelope is going to go and where the wheels are going to track to. So even if you do it one time, you don't have to start over. You can just grab a target point and move it around. If you want to get rid of one, you can just drag one back to the previous one, and it removes that target point. Now, when I did that, notice the vehicle stops right here. And I have just a line going out further than that. It's basically telling me that it can't, make, it can't make that sharp a turn. So I have to add another point back in there. Let's see. Here we go. Grab the insert target point. Put one there and drag this one. I meant to add one in front of that. Okay. And as soon as the vehicle path is possible again, it highlights the rest of it for me. So that's uh, one way to do our vehicle tracking. And that's relatively simple. Just pick points, drag it around, make it go where you want to. Now, it's not limited to just single vehicles like that. We do have other vehicles we can choose. I'm going to uh, grab another one out of here. We have one for a car and a boat trailer, something like that. Let's see if I can do that. Well, Someone asked earlier, can we back up a WB67? I want to say yes, we can. I'm going to hold off. i got a better drawing to do that in. So let me just jump right over to that. So, well, I know this loading dock is too small. I know I can't get one in there, but let's just see what happens anyway. So an auto drive arc, come down, grab a WB67. And we'll put that in our drawing. And put it up about here. And I know he's going to have to swing out really wide to make this corner, but we'll try it. And he's going to run over a sidewalk or two. Okay, so there he is, pretty well straightened out. Now I want to back him up. It's really simple to back up a vehicle with vehicle tracking. Just simply drag your mouse out the back of the vehicle. My color scheme is not the greatest. Notice that vehicle is now backing up. I can see where that path is going to go if he tries to back it up. We'll get him back to about here. Then can he back up into there? 
we don't mind taking out a tree or two, yes, you can get that vehicle back into that loading dock. There we go. So I took out a tree, ran over a car or two, but I can back up a WB67. So I'll, I got a better example of that. Um, let's try that same same thing with a little smaller vehicle this time. Let's go back to our uh, maybe an SU30. Because we have some great options on this. Bring my vehicle in like this. And I want to come down this driveway. One of the things I can do is actually say pick alignment. And say make that truck go parallel to this line I pick, either the sidewalk or the center line, doesn't matter. And now it's coming over here and running parallel to that. Maybe not the best way to do it, but it does work. And then I can come over here, once again, pick alignment. And they can go parallel to this one. And then start backing that up again. Try to give it a little more room. And one more pick alignment and back that straight into the loading dock. So easy. And we'll just drop them in right about there. So looks like we ran over a curb. Let's adjust a target point, see if we can drag that over a bit. Okay. Just by grabbing a grip, I can see I, could, I avoided hitting this curb here. And prior to that, I was running over sidewalk over here. Grabbed a grip, moved it around. I see it is possible. So what else can we do with this? Well, I did mention real-time analysis. One of the things we can do, select our vehicle path, and we can animate this. Click on the play button, and we'll speed it up just a little bit, and we can see that truck up here at the top driving along that path. Now, if we had multiple vehicle paths in here, it would animate all of them at the same time, so you can see how maybe a car might have to pause a little bit to let a truck around the corner, something like that. So I'm going to hit the front, it's going to back him up, and right back into that loading dock. There he goes. And we can take that one step further if you ever really wanted to. Uh, let's click on the uh, Animate in 3D button. Give the computer a second to think here. And we'll hit the play button again. Bring it back to the front. Actually, we can just hit the slider along here and watch that truck come through in 3D. Now, it's not showing up because there's a vehicle getting in the way. So we do have other things over here we can check. We have a camera. Uh, we can go from a driver's eye. What's the driver going to see coming in here? This is great for checking sight distances. Hit play on that again. Driver's coming in really fast, but there he is, comes in. Now he's going to look backing up. We actually turn on a button for mirror view when reversing. So when the drive, truck is driving forward, we see out the front. When he's backing up, we see out the mirrors. I think that's pretty cool. And there's a record button on here if you ever want to capture it. So that's kind of the, the quick, super down and dirty of vehicle path analysis. But it's not limited to just horizontal. Can we fit into the parking lot? Imagine we have a vertical to consider as well. I've got down here just a real simple polyline, just a standard lightweight polyline. This is sort of a one-to-one -one representation of a railroad track crossing, possibly. Okay, got a nice horizontal line which represents flat ground coming into it. Got a hump in the middle for a, I think, an eight-foot-tall railroad track, something like that. Will our vehicle make it over? Well, let's find out. I want to start off with something simple, just a passenger car. And let's go for a motorhome, why not? Proceed. Yep, it's not what I want to do. Uh, I do need to do a... Where is it? 
Vertical clearance. I'm sorry. Great big button right there. Totally lost it. For the motorhome. Proceed. Pick that line right there. It's going to drive along it. And we see that motorhome is going to make it over that hump pretty easy. Might get a little bit close down here you know, at the transition points, but it will clear it. Now, what happens if we get a vehicle that will not clear that? To another vertical clearance. Instead of a motorhome, let's try that with a school bus, large school bus. We're going to pick that path right there. Proceed yes. It will kind of warn us that we've got some issues here. And we see the clearance envelope, that blue line right there, is not above ground anymore. It's going to scrape going across there and scrape pretty hard. What we can do to find out is if the front or the back of the vehicle hitting, we can actually come in here and drop in a profile. Okay, this is what our bus looks like. Now, how's that going to look on our path? Well, let's do a vehicle outline. And we want to show the body and the chassis. And we now see that school bus along here. As we drive it along, we'll see that it follows the profile as well. And we drop it in the right spot. We can see, hey, right here, we're going to have a bottoming out with the back of the bus going up that railroad track incline. And I would imagine we're going to have a problem on the other side, just thinking. So let's drop in another outline. Over on the other side, we'll see what the problem is. Looks like we might have a little conflict right there in the middle. And then when it's coming down off the hump, as to be expected, we have issues. Works out pretty well. Now, this is not limited to just simple polylines for profile. If you have a civil 3D profile, you can do the exact same thing on that civil 3D profile, either design profile or an existing ground profile. And it understands it being a profile. The only caveat is you have to make your vertical scale on the profile one-to-one. -one. Not that hard to do. Just create a new style, display your profile on that, and you're good to go. Now, earlier I mentioned that uh, vehicle tracking integrates with Civil 3D. That gives us all sorts of fun capabilities. Here I have a Civil 3D intersection. I've got a vehicle tracking along that. Now, this is a large, very large uh, low boy. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but let's find out. I want to grab that vehicle path, and I want to insert a profile. So I want to see what this looks like. I did that with the school bus earlier. Let's do it with this vehicle just to get a better sense of scale of what's going on here. Drop that in there. That is a rather large truck. The uh, last trailer section is 87 feet long. That's should say overall length 124 feet. Big, big, big low boy. So a vehicle tracking analysis has been done on this. The path analysis, we can see this, this low boy is going to make it through that intersection just fine, horizontally. How about vertically? Let's think about this for a minute. So I've got a big truck coming along here. It's coming through the intersection. And as it comes to the intersection, you will get probably a low point of our intersection over here, another low point over here from the road crown, and the road crown in the middle. With that low boy trailer, is it going to make it? Or are we going to scrape the bottom of the trailer? Let's find out. I want to throw in a vehicle outline so I can explain that a little better. Let's show it right about here. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, once again, color scheme is not the greatest, but that can be adjusted. So I've got my vehicle trailer. The back wheels are in the low spot of the intersection. Over here, my tractor and intermediate trucks are in the low side of this road, which puts the high spot right about here. I want to find out if that's going to fit or we're, we're going to scrape. Instead of doing a vertical clearance, because I don't necessarily have a profile here, I have a Civil 3D corridor, I can insert a ground conflict report. I can remember which button it looks like. There it is, ground conflict report. 
click on it, click on that path. It's going to analyze it, think about it for a little bit, and it's going to show me some yellow and green and potentially red lines. And what does this all mean? Well, I've got, as my vehicle comes across here, this green area, I can see it is basically 18 hundredths of a foot clearance in there. The yellow area down here, I am down to within a less than a tenth of clearance. Now that's under ideal conditions. Do you think it actually got built that well? Probably not. I'm not sure that I'd want to trust moving that semi through that intersection given this information. Well, as you can check it before you go out and build the road, or you can actually go out and build the road uh, or survey the road, build it as an intersection, and track the vehicle along it if, it's, if, if you think it's going to be that critical. So we're not limited to just horizontal vehicle path. We can analyze the vertical side of it as well. well let's jump back over here. Another drawing. We're going to switch to another section of vehicle tracking. And that is parking, parking lots, the layout of these. As I mentioned before, vehicle tracking is not going to optimize it for you but it does allow you to very quickly come in here and try multiple iterations to find something that works while you're laying this out. So in the parking section of our ribbon, we're going to create a new parking row. So the new parking row, uh, we've got lots and lots of options in here. What do we want to use? I'm going to actually close that because I want to show you something else. Let's go to the parking standards. So there's lots of parking standards that we can choose from. You know, the U.S. parking standards, we'll start with that one. You can create your own parking standard. And what's contained in that? Well, about anything related to parking stripes. How wide is the bay? What types of bays do we have? Do we have motorcycle parking? Do we have handicap parking, small vehicle, um, van parking? All sorts of different things could be specified in that standard. Now that goes further. I'll get into this a little bit later. You can narrow that down to what color paint are we using, how wide of paint stripes, how wide are the stalls, how long. Do we put signs? Do we put uh, handicap symbols on the ground, curb stops? Whatever you want to you can specify be specified in here. Let's go ahead and add one of these. Let's create a new row. So that's based on those that standard that I selected. It's going to number them. It's going to do all sorts of fun things. We can pick our bay alignment. Do we want you know offsets, straight throughs, diagonals, 45s, 90s, 60s? Lots of different things can be specified. But I'm just going to start laying this out because I don't know exactly what I want yet. So I do know I want to kind of define it by this area here. This whole area is going to be a parking lot for a new fitness center. So I'm going to turn on my object snaps and just pick the ends of these lines. Okay. Great, starting to lay out some stripes for us. I want to keep going. Let's kind of pick around here. Notice it's putting islands on the corners for me automatically. Now what about this curve? Well, I'll come back into that. I'm just going to kind of pick the endpoints of it for now. Assuming we're just going in straight lines, it's going to give me that. After I pick essentially the points I want to use in this, I get to pick do I want the left side, do I want the right side, or I want both. I'm going to get the, the right side, the interior, so I'll click here, and it gives me one row parking around the outside. Now, I said I need to adjust these real quick. Like everything else in vehicle tracking and Civil 3D, you move, grab a grip and move something around. Uh, it automatically adjusts, so I grab an arrow grip and snap that back to my arc. And this adjusted, got rid of the island over here, same thing with this one. Go to nearest on that one. Okay. So it automatically curved that parking row for me. Sounds pretty cool so far. Uh, let's Think about what else would I need to do. One row of parking around the outside, a lot of room in the middle. Well, I want to maybe make a parallel row. Right, let's see what it looks like. 
It's a great way to try it. Okay. So I want to do this parking row, pick it, and it's going to give me a offset from that. I've got a pretty limited range in which I can do it. It won't let me get it any closer than what my aisle width specified. And I can't go any smaller because basically you can't offset that anymore. So we'll just put it right there. Simple click. We've got a parallel row. Okay. Now, I think everyone saw that this is probably not a valid option. It's pretty crappy parking lot layout design. Everyone's probably been in a parking lot like that one point or another, but uh, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to erase that one. Simple AutoCAD erase command and parking row goes away. Let's try creating a new row instead. I'm just going to kind of pick some points randomly up about here. I don't even have to be exact. I'm just kind of drag it out like that. And I want both sides of that, so I click right in the middle. And I get both sides. Now, it's, like I said, it was sort of an approximation. If we come back here, we can grab grips and make these go wherever we want to. Just move them around. I want to kind of get it close up here, just eyeballing it. Eyeball that close in a couple of places. And I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of snapped to that parking line that was already there on one end. Didn't quite get the other one. Let's go just a hair closer. I want to grab this grip and drag it back. So I can make these longer or shorter very, very easily. What Something else I can do with this parking row is grab grips on the end and adjust the angle of the end caps. And I don't think I quite like that, so I'm just going to tweak it a little bit more. Drag that out to about there, and I can adjust one side independently of the other to make that fit what I need. And I'll keep those islands in there for me. Is it going to be perfect? Do exactly what you want to? No, probably not. Um, can you tweak it? Yes. There are some limitations. Don't ever repeat this, but you could just explode it when you're done and make it do whatever you need to. But anyway, I've got a parking row here. I'm going to do a new parallel row and pick our parking row, offset it down to here. Both sides, once again, parallel row, both sides, right about there, drop it in there. And then all I'll have to do is go back, grab my end pieces, drag them back. Let's switch the angle on the end to about there. Now, I notice it's keeping, that's all sorts of guidelines. A little blue line running right there tells me that's my clearance necessary for this row. So it allows me to judge where I want to locate things on the other side. So I can use that to optimize my parking spaces. Now notice these are kind of a little bit offset. I want to change that maybe. I'm going to grab that parking row. And there's a button up here for edit parking row. And I can change how this is being laid out. I can make them right here to make the bay alignments be straight pull-throughs. Click on that. Hit apply. Watch what happens to our parking stripes. They're now lined up. If I want to change the angles, it's as simple as changing it in this. 75 degrees on both sides. Hit apply. I get that. So adjusting this is pretty simple and easy to do. You've got all sorts of options in here to work with. Um, we have flow directions. We have what vehicle class, large or small, bay angles, bay styles, normal or disabled. You can make a few others if you want to. And you can even create parking zones. So imagine you've got a big uh, shopping mall. You want to put an employee parking area. You can create a new zone called employee. Or maybe, you know, zone A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4 could be done just as well. Um, we can put footpaths in our islands. We can uh, bend our islands. We can do all sorts of fun stuff in here. Just turn all that stuff on. Hit apply. Now, 
We'll get a little walking path down the middle between the cars if you want to. Uh, that sort of widens our rows, so you may not want to do that. So how about uh, handicap spaces? You ever have to put one of those in? Uh, pretty easy to do. I'm going to come up here and edit a parking bay this time. Edit an individual parking bay. I'm going to pick my outside row. It's going to ask for which bay to edit. Let's grab that first bay right there. And I want to change the bay type from normal to disabled. And I've got all sorts of options down here. I could put in wheel stops if I wanted to. Um, let's hit OK. And now we have a handicapped parking space. If I want to, I can pick a few other bays. Let's put a handicap there. Oops. Let's go back to this one, sorry. Pick our first one, copy to, and I want to copy it to that one. I want a handicap there. I think I want two or three in front of the door. And that's probably good. If we wanted to, we could uh, edit another parking row. We're going to change that one to handicapped as well. So I've added several handicap spaces. Was anyone keeping track of how many I added? And probably not, but luckily, we have a button in here for parking report. We'll click on that button. Parking report button right there. And I don't know where my parking report is. Somewhere off screen, maybe? Oh, my parking report, uh, great. Never seen Canada do, never able to do a demo without something going awry. And I think this is that one thing going awry. I want to display a parking report. It's going to show me a count of all the bays, what percentage of those are handicapped. Display it by zones or areas, and you just have to take my word for it that it does work. Now, there's a lot more we can do with parking layouts. We can add rows, we can split rows, make a drive lane down the middle, um, edit individual bays. We can even edit a parking island if you wanted to. Uh, let's go. Let's do an edit. Actually, what I want to do is go to the standards explorer. I want to deal down, dive down into the standard just a little bit. I want to edit a copy of that. Never edit the original. And notice how much stuff in here we can change. Safety posts, bay markings, uh, valid bay angle, safety zones, uh, construction lines, wheel stops. Lots and lots and lots of things in here we can use. Um, parking meter, bay markings, that's what I want. Okay. What color paint am I going to use? Uh, my offsets, T caps on the end, do I want uh, T markings at, at the end of my lines? Just a bazillion little things in there that can be adjusted. Anyway, let's jump on something else real quick. Oh, already did that one. Roundabouts, junctions. Um, Civil 3D does a wonderful job nowadays with intersections, but they're just standard two alignments come together. Not a lot you can do with it. Civil 3D does have a roundabout layout tool, but that is just 2D layout. I'm going to make a roundabout using vehicle tracking instead. So click on new roundabout. Uh, pretty much go through the defaults on this. Scale is one to one. Let's see if our surfaces. We can tell it to interact with an existing surface if you have one defined in your drawing You're using Civil 3D. We can create alignments. Civil 3D alignments can be created by doing this. I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. And then we have road marking standards. I'm going to 
couple different solutions in here. Vehicle Tracking has one. There's a third-party package out there called Line Design Pro that's been incorporated into Vehicle Tracking. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, let's see. Hit OK. Now it wants a name for my intersection. My junction, junction one is going to be good for now. Drawing style, I'm going to go light colors for dark backgrounds. Once again, it's like Civil 3D, you can make your own styles. And we're going to hit OK. Next question is, where do I want the center of my roundabout to be? Let's just grab a point over about here. Now it's going to want the um, lines coming in. So I'm going to pick one leg of it at a time and just pick the OK tab on each of these. And notice it's already starting to construct my roundabout. Call this in leg number two. You can call it northwest, whatever you wanted to. And I pick all of them coming in. If I only had three, I stopped there. If I had four, five, or six, I could keep picking these. And it doesn't have to be just one single alignment. It could be, you know, five separate polylines coming in here. Whatever you want it to be. But notice it creates my my roundabout for me. Gives me a 2D layout, very quick and easy. And just like everything else we've looked at so far, there are a lot of grips on this. If you want to change the lane width, you want to change the center of your circle, grab this width, that one right there, drag that out a little bit wider. Okay. We can change what it looks like. Now, that's not going to work because I've gotten way too small, but you kind of get the idea. So just using grips, you can make this appear the way you want to. Now, if we look a little closer, we've already got some signage in here. Okay, so there's going to put a, be a yield sign right there. I've got a little splitter island. Over here, I have a roundabout sign. Um, oh, over here, i got a triple chevron, one-way sign sort of thing. I've also got, on each of these legs, I've got some, some values in here, some parameters. The radius tells me if it's in green, everything's good. This is checking the radius for these for certain vehicle types. It's checking um, velocities coming around there. Am I going too fast? If they're in green, the values are probably pretty good. This top one is in orange. V1 is um, at 22.4 miles an hour. Probably with these specs, it's going to be a little bit fast. You know, might want to slow things down. I got one down over here at uh, 39.22 miles an hour. That's for the straight through traffic. They really don't have to make much of a turn, so there's no incentive for them to slow down. So what can I do to fix that? Well, I'm just going to grab my entire roundabout and move it over here and see what happens. Okay. Well, that just seemed to make things even worse, because now I've got reds and oranges on two of these. But kind of grab things, move around where you want to. Let's put it back over right in the middle, see what happens. So you get some analysis at the same time. Yep, now they're all still messed up. You get some analysis at the same time as the, the visual layout of this. So let's grab that junction one more time. And we have the junction, yeah, where is it? Edit the roundabout. There are a bunch of things in here we can change, not just the name of it. Um, we can change you know, the, the specifics of these. The center island, central island, I guess. What is the, you know, the, X, y, or the X and Y, north and easting of that? What are my diameters? Uh, do I have crown lines, check levels and grades? Each leg has a bunch of things that can be adjusted on this, and you can change these in here if you know the specifics of it. Suppose the municipality you're working for has some properties they want to see on all the roundabouts, minimum radius, maximum uh, radius type things, maximum speeds. You can come in here and change all of these things. What's my approach lane look like? Okay, well, it's designed at uh, 18.64 miles per hour. 
how many lanes do I have approaching it? Uh, just there's literally thousands of things you could change in here to make it behave the way you want to. What I want to go to though is down here. Um, Civil 3D corridor. I want to check the box that says create alignments. And it's going to update those alignments, it's going to create the alignments, create the profile, and a box for creating a corridor. And say rebuild now or just apply. It's going to go out and in about 10 seconds build a civil 3D corridor for that roundabout. Okay, so that was about 12 seconds, but still pretty darn quick. And I'm going to do something I probably shouldn't do, but I'm going to bring this up in Object Viewer so you can see what it looks like. Give it a second to think. My portal of computer is struggling. There we go. That is a three-dimensional Civil 3D corridor, and I'm afraid to pan much more because it's, while doing this WebEx thing, it, it seems to uh, kill performance on me. There's my Civil 3D corridor at least the start of one. You still might want to come in here and make some changes to it. But it's some place to start. Now, earlier I'd mentioned that vehicle tracking understands um, simple 3D objects. So let's try this. Let's do an auto drive arc. Let's go down because we can. Let's grab a WB67 and proceed. For my vehicle location, I'm just going to pick some place near my, oops, did you see that? As I get near my corridor, it understands the lane, and it's going to drop that vehicle directly on the lane. Okay. So I start there. For some reason, it rebuilds the corridor after doing that. And now I can start driving this. I could drive it off-road, or if, as long as I stay on the corridor, it understands each of these legs, and I can drive that all the way over to here simply by clicking somewhere else on that corridor. And there goes another rebuild. So now I can see that vehicle coming through here. Let me see real quick, and if I've got a style, I can apply, make that go away. Uh, I really don't. And then, I don't want to turn that off. I actually did a video a couple of weeks ago on how to make that road appear the way you want to. So it shows concrete and asphalt. It gets rid of all the little cross-section lines. But we see that the truck's probably not going to make it around there. It's all the way in the grass in my center of my roundabout. But we'll leave it there just because we can. And let's do another auto drive arc. This time let's drop in a... Oh, let's do a car and boat trailer. Drop him in on the other side. It snaps to my corridor. Allows me to just come over to the other side of my roundabout and pick a spot. And we rebuild for no reason whatsoever again. So now I've got two vehicle paths in here. I'm going to select both of those and animate. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Animate in 3D. Hit the Play button. And I'll slide this up out of the way a little bit. And it's showing that car and the semi coming through the roundabout at the same time. And notice those little street signs I'd put in there earlier, automatically showing up in 3D so you can see what they're going to look like. And we get to watch the truck run over this center uh, signage right over here. And we can speed that up just a hair. Yep, there goes the sign. I mean, it's cool if it actually knocked the sign down, but it doesn't. Okay, that I think is kind of cool stuff. And actually, that now pretty much concludes everything I was going to talk to you guys about. 
Let's do this. We've taken it for a drive. Any questions? So if you've got a question, go ahead and ask. I will, let's see. I have unmuted any, everyone's microphone. If you want to verbally ask a question, great. We've got uh, chat windows, Q&A window. You can use either one of those. And let's see. Paul was asking, can we back up a large semi like a WB67? Hopefully I showed you it's possible. If you want to see more about that, uh, give me just a second here. Don't know if I've got necessarily good drawing on which to do that specifically. I, yeah, we could probably try to back one into here, I guess. So an auto drive arc on the WB67. Bring him up the road like this. Pull out the back side of the vehicle. Here, I'm just going to simple pick alignment and pick that right there so we can back it. Who doesn't like that line? I have no idea what that is. Now it's long. Let's try it one more time. Now, the, another thing we can do, I've already got this vehicle path in here. I want to keep driving on it. I just pick my path, click on auto drive arc, and I'm back where I was before, and I can continue to drive or back up. So I had to make a change to my drawing. I did that and come back in, pick alignment, and back that truck right down the road. I'm going to try that, see if we can do it. We back him into here. Doesn't look like he's going to fit into there. But. We can get close, I guess. So I still have the ability to adjust this. What do I need to do? Try to drag that over, see if it helps. Nope, that truck's just not going to fit down that very easily without running over something. You might be able to play around with that and find a Find a way to get him in there. Hopefully, Paul, that answers your question. Um, it can be done. Just simply drag out the back side of the vehicle and, and keep on going. Let's see. Mainly when it has to stop and shifts over, keeps getting locked. Not quite sure I understand that one. It has to stop and shift over. Okay. Uh, I guess I need a little clarification on that question. Hold on one second. Oh, truck can almost make the vacuum maneuver, but it has to pull forward and then back up again. So, um, so you have to make two or three times, make a three-point turn sort of thing. Let's try it. Auto drive arc. Okay, we're going to back on here. One thing you may want to consider is a turn on spot button. So basically, the driver will pull up. And before starting to back up, he can turn his wheels right on the spot, and that might help. Then we can back up a little bit. So then he has to pull forward, come out the front of the vehicle, and then out the back of the vehicle again. You might be able to get it. Um, as long as you keep hitting turn on spot, you can make those turns tighter and tighter. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're meaning. Um, maybe give me a, give me a call on that later if you still have any issues with it. Okay, another question. Um, can layers be set for vehicle swept path, et cetera, et cetera? It can be set. Oh, follow up. 
Um, can layers be edited, not set? Interesting question. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to grab this vehicle right here. And that is a report wizard. I'm going to click on advanced so we can do this. Show what we want to look at. We're going to edit the chassis outlines. We'll start with that one. Edit that. And there is some place in here you can change it. Um, you got to find it. Yes, there is a, a spot to do it. I just got to find out exactly where it is. I think I have to back up a little bit. Uh, yes, it can be done. I just don't remember exactly where it is. It, you, it's somewhere in this report wizard, I think. It can be edited after the fact, but it's a whole lot easier to do it beforehand. So maybe what is being alluded to here, I'm not sure. One thing to be aware of, this specific vehicle, path, the whole path, let's see if we can get it out on the screen here, is on layer ATR, Auto Track Route 01 or 02, whatever, ATR 02. If I had a different vehicle path in here, this one over here is on layer ATR01. So what it's doing is putting each vehicle track on its own separate layer. There is a way to set it so the path of the chassis, the wheel paths would be on one layer and the vehicle envelope, the box, would be on another layer. And you can separate this out in many different ways. I'm not sure if you can actually separate them out after the fact, now that I'm rethinking about that. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at Report Wizards somewhere in here. Let's just go through it here. I think I missed a step very beginning. Let's just say it can be done in the report wizard. I'm relatively certain you can do it after the fact. No, you cannot do it after the fact. You can do it before you start. Um, Drawing settings, paths, layers. Here we can do, uh, right now, in the uh, drawing settings, set to use one layer for all paths. You could do one layer for path and one for each report element. You could do that very easily. But uh, changing it after the fact, maybe if we create them as complex, we could change them after. Let's try that and see what happens. So I made a change. Let's throw in another vehicle path here real quick. Okay, so that specific vehicle passed on our ATR 03, but how many layers did it create for us? So here we have ATR 01, 2, and 3, and 03 is further subdivided down into the bodies and the chassis. I'm not sure if that's it would uh, would solve your needs. You might be able to work with that a little bit. No one's ever asked me that question, so I don't really know the answer. But it should give you some place to start from. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, any other questions? 
If not, I've uh, run out of things to talk about. So let's jump back over here, see if we've got anything else, questions. We did that. Uh, if you've got any other questions, we've got the answers to all those. Shameless plug there. Once again, give us a call. 770-434-3050. Ask to talk to uh, either myself or my account manager or visit our website at www.reverproducts.com and kind of just check us out. So at this point, I'm going to uh, say have a nice day. You all uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and thank you for attending. Oh, yeah.